Hi there everyone! This is Jefferson Lising. I'm Jenica Fernandez. I'm Edelin Leones Mendoza. I am Marquis G. Marcos. I am Vanessa G. Tumilang. And I am Marjorie L. Kiap. And today, we will be discussing the legal basis of Philippine educational system. And on this topic, we will be discussing the Article 14, Section 5 of the 1935 Philippine Constitution, the Article 15, Section 8 of the 1973 Philippine Constitution, and also the Article 14, Sections 1 to 5 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. And on this topic also, we will be discussing the other legal bases. And to start, 1935 Constitution, Article 14, The General Provisions, Section 5. All educational institutions shall be under the supervision of and subject to regulation by the state. The government shall establish and maintain a complete and adequate system of public education and shall provide at least free public primary instruction and citizenship training to adult citizens. All schools shall aim to develop moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, and vocational efficiency and to teach the duties of citizenship. Optional religious instruction shall be maintained in the public school as now authorized by law. Universities established by the state shall enjoy academic freedom. The state shall create scholarship in arts, science, and letters for specially gifted citizens. After the colonization of America, we build our own constitution. That is 1935 Philippine Constitution. And now we are focused on Article 14, the General Provision because we're still at the beginning of establishing our own educational system, state can only provide free public primary instruction. But of course, state creates scholarship to enjoy academic freedom to universities, such science, arts, and letters for especially gifted citizens. And also they offer citizenship training for adult citizens to equip themselves with the basic skills that they need to possess. Moreover, all schools shall aim to develop moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, vocational efficiency, and teach the duties of citizenship. Lastly, in Article 14, optional religious instruction shall be maintained in the public school. So now let's proceed to 1973 Constitution, Article 15, the General Provisions. Section 8, Number 1. All educational institutions shall be under the supervision of and subject to regulation by the state. The state shall establish and maintain a complete, adequate, and integrated system of education relevant to the goals of national development. 1973 Constitution, Article 15, General Provision, Section 8 because the law requires every educational institution such as school including technical, trade, or vocational school, junior college, college or university that is operated or directly supported by the Philippines, operated or directly supported by any state or local government, or by a political subdivision by any state or local government or approved by a state agency or subdivision of the state or accredited by a state recognized or nationally recognized accrediting body. The state provides the establishment and maintenance of a complete, adequate, and integrated system of education considering the goals of national development. Number two. All institutions of higher learning shall enjoy academic freedom. All institutions of college or university level shall enjoy the freedom of teachers and students to teach, study, personal knowledge, and research without unreasonable interference or restrictions from law, institutional regulations, and or public pressure. Third, the study of the Constitution shall be part of the curricula in all schools. All institutions educating children must include the study of the Constitution to their curricula. Fourth one, all educational institutions shall aim to inculcate love of country, teach the duties of citizenship, and develop moral character, 
personal discipline, and scientific, technological, and vocational efficiency. All educational institution is responsible to inculcate love of country, teach the duties of citizenship, and development of moral character, personal discipline, and scientific, technological, and vocational efficiency. Next, the state shall maintain a system of pre-public elementary education and in areas where finances permit, establish and maintain a system of free public education at least up to the secondary level. The state shall establish and maintain a system of free public education at least up to the secondary level. Next, the state shall provide citizenship and vocational training to adult citizens and out of school youth and create and maintain scholarship for poor and deserving students. The adult citizens and out-of-school youth have the rights to benefit citizenship and vocational training, while the poor and deserving students shall be provided and maintain scholarships. Next, educational institutions other than those established by religious orders, mission boards, and charitable organizations shall be owned solely by the citizens of the Philippines, or corporations or association, 60% of the capital of which is owned by such citizens. The control and administration of the educational institution shall be vested in the citizens of the Philippines. No educational institution shall be established exclusively for aliens, and no group of aliens shall comprise more than one-third of the enrollment in any school. The provision of this subsection shall not apply to schools established for foreign diplomatic personnel and their dependents, and, unless otherwise provided by law, for other foreign temporary residents. Educational institutions shall be owned only by the citizens of the Philippines, except those established by religious orders, mission boards, and charitable organizations. Only the citizens of the Philippines are to control and administer the establishment of educational institution for non-citizens of the philippines to comprise more than one-third of the enrollment in any school are both not allowed here in the philippines except the schools established for foreign diplomatic personnel and their dependents and unless otherwise provided by law for other foreign temporary residents Number 8. At the option expressed in writing by the parents or guardians, and without cost to them and the government, religion shall be taught to their children or wards in public elementary and high schools as may be provided by law. Religion shall be taught to their children or wards in public elementary and high school with consent of their parents or guardians without the cost to them and to the government. Now that we're done on 1973 Philippine Constitution, let's now proceed to 1987 Constitution, Article 14, Sections 1 to 5. Section 1. The state shall protect and promote the right of all the citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. The 1987 Constitution's Article 14, Sections 1 to 5, which is the current basis of our education here in the Philippines. In the first section, the quality education must be possible or accessible for all citizens. Next, Section 2. The first one is, the state shall establish, maintain, and support a complete adequate and integrated system of education relevant to the needs of the people and society. This is the reason why various courses are offered depending on the needs of the people and the society. Apparently, here in Aurora, the primary industry are as follows. Agriculture, forestry and fishing, natural resources, tourism, trade, and etc. That's why various colleges offers related courses thereof. Next, 
the state shall establish and maintain a system of free public education in the elementary and high school levels without limiting the natural rights of parents to rear their children elementary education is compulsory for all children of school age in this subsection we are now enjoying free public education in the elementary and high school levels with consideration of the natural rights of the parents to rear their children Elementary education is mandatory for all children of school age. Third, the state shall establish and maintain a system of scholarship grants, student loan programs, subsidies, and other incentives which shall be available to deserving students in both private and public schools, especially to the underprivileged. In this, the deserving students in both public and private schools, especially to the underprivileged, meaning with standard grades and other requirements, are able to enjoy scholarship grants, um, student loan programs, and subsidies and other incentives. For example, the CHED Tulong Dunong Scholarship Program, the OST, OWA, and other scholarship programs offered by the government. The next one is, the state shall encourage non-formal, informal, and indigenous learning system, as well as self-learning independent and out-of-school youth study programs, particularly those that respond to community needs. This is why the local government promotes community-based sports programs such as Liga sa Barangay and programs developed by organizations such as the Boy Scouts, the Girl Guides, community or non-credit adult education courses, sports or fitness programs, professional conference style seminars, and continuing professional development. And lastly, the state shall provide adult citizens the disabled, the out-of-school youth with training in civics, vocational efficiency, and skills. The implementation of TESDA, ALS, SPES, and other training programs and lifelong process of learning. Basically, there is a program, accreditation, and equivalency program, indigenous people's education, informal education, and madrasa education for better understanding between the migrant Muslims and their host communities that are financed by Bureau of Owls, LGU, NGO, and private groups or donors. Section 3, number 1. All educational institutions shall include the study of the Constitution as part of the curricula. That's why in high school subjects, particularly in Araling Panlipunan, some lessons are about constitution for the reason that the law requires to do so. Next is, they shall inculcate patriotism and nationalism, poster love of humanity, respect for human rights, appreciation of the role of the national heroes in the historical development of the country, teach the rights and duties of citizenship, and strengthen ethical and spiritual values, develop moral character and personal discipline, encourage critical and creative thinking, broaden scientific and technological knowledge, and promote efficiency. An example of this one is the annual celebration of Buanang Wika, where we can experience the ambience of our native culture long before. We commemorate the ancestral uh, culture through wearing uh, traditional clothes like Filipiniana, Barong Tagalog, and other wares. And another example for this one is the event held back in 2019, um, led by the senior high school program called Sindayo. Let us now proceed to section 4, number 1. The state recognizes the complementary roles of the public and private institutions in the educational system and shall exercise reasonable supervision and regulation of all institutions 
or all educational institutions. It is the responsibility of the state to supervise and regulate all educational institutions. Section 4, number 2. Educational institutions, other than those established by religious groups and mission boards, shall be allowed solely by citizens of the Philippines or corporations or association at least 60% of the capital of which is owned by such citizens. The Congress may, however, require increased Filipino equity participation in all educational institutions. The control and administration of all educational institutions shall vested in citizens of the Philippines. No educational institution shall be established exclusively for aliens, and no group of aliens shall comprise more than one-third of the enrollment in any school. The provisions of this subsection shall not apply to schools established by foreign diplomatic personnel and their dependents, and, unless otherwise provided by law, for other foreign temporary residents. Educational institutions shall be owned only by the citizens of the Philippines, except those established by religious orders, mission boards, and charitable organizations. Only the citizens of the Philippines are to control and administer. The establishment of educational institution for non-citizens of the Philippines to comprise more than one-third of the enrollment in any school are both not allowed here in the Philippines, except the schools established for foreign diplomatic personnel and their dependents, and unless otherwise provided by law for other foreign temporary residents. Section 4, number 3. All revenues and assets of non-stock, non-profit educational institutions used actually directly and exclusively for educational purposes shall be exempt from taxes and duties. Upon the dissolution or cessation of the corporate existence of such institutions, their assets shall be disposed of in the manner provided by law. Proprietary educational institutions, including those cooperatively owned, may likewise be entitled to such exemptions subject to the limitations provided by law, including restrictions on dividends and provisions for reinvestment. This one's for tax exemptions for non-stock, non-profit educational institution. This is why the textbooks and other school supplies are free to enjoy by the students and the teachers. Section 4, number 4. Subject to conditions prescribed by law, all grants, endowments, donations, or contributions used actually, directly, and exclusively for educational purposes shall be exempt from tax. Same as true with all grants, endowments, donations, and other contributions for educational purposes. Now, from Section 5, Number 1. The state shall take into account regional and sectoral needs and condition and shall encourage local planning in the development of educational policies and programs. Since the local and regional government are the extension of our state to reach out the citizens' needs, they are the ones who take into account for observing the state of educational policies and programs to let the state government be aware of it and take account to provide needs uh, for its growth. Number two, academic freedom shall be enjoyed in all institutions of higher learning. All institutions of college or university level shall enjoy the freedom of teachers and students to teach study, personal knowledge, and research without unreasonable interference or restrictions from law, institutional regulations, and or public pressure. Section 5, number 3. Every citizen has a right to select a profession or a study or a course of study subject to fair, reasonable, and equitable admission and academic requirements. 
That's why we have the right to choose our own profession with reasonable and equitable admission and academic requirements. Number four, the state shall enhance the right of teachers to professional advancement. Non-teaching academic and non-academic personnel shall enjoy the protection of the state. The state provides the law to enhance the right of teachers to professional advancement and to protect non-teaching academic and non-academic personnel. And lastly, number five, the state shall assign the highest budgetary priority to education and ensure that teaching will attract and retain its rightful share of the best available talents through adequate remuneration and other means of job satisfaction and fulfillment. The education must receive the highest budgetary priority and ensures teaching will attract and retain the rightful shares of the best available talents considering job satisfaction and fulfillment. And now we are focused on Batas Pambansa Bilan 232, or also known the Education Act of 1982. This was an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. In accordance with Section 2, this act shall apply to and govern both formal and non-formal system in public and private schools in all levels of the entire educational system. The Batas Pambansa Bilang 232, also known the Education Act of 1982, it says in Section 2, there are national development goals for public and private school in all levels of the entire educational system. So, there are as follow. Achieve and maintain accelerating rate of economic development and social progress. Next is the maximum participation of all people in attainment and enjoyment of benefits of such growth. Last is the national unity, consciousness, and preserve development and promote desirable cultural, moral, and spiritual values in changing world. In Batas Pambansa Bilang 232, the Education Act of 1982, it also stated in Section 3 that, the state shall promote the right of every individual to relevant quality education, regardless of sex, age, creed, socioeconomic status, physical and mental conditions, racial or ethnic origin, political or other affiliation. The state shall therefore promote and maintain a quality of access to education as well as the benefits of education by all its citizens. It means that no matter what issue will arise, no matter what um, sex, age, or any status you have, as long as you are a Filipino and you are a, a citizen of this state, you can avail the relevant quality education that is offered by the country of the Philippines.